that's what a two-day marathon build in my shop ends up looking like. Sorry for the mess. I'm gonna clean up as we go today and just kind of do what I can while we're building this project. Now, if you hear a little bit of water running in the background, I apologize. It's pouring rain outside today and our sump pump is down here in the basement with me. So if you hear a little bit of water in the background, that's what you're hearing. So earlier this week I posted this pen, which is a modified slimline on my Instagram account. And I got quite a few questions about it. People asking how it's made, what's the process behind it. So I thought this would be a nice quick little project for this week. It's something I can do while I'm kind of cleaning up this mess and something you guys can learn from. They're a neat little pen. Whenever I have these at shows or at different markets, they always sell quick because it's it's kind of a cool looking pen and the way that it functions is really neat and they're not difficult to make. So let's clean off the workbench first and then we can prep our blank. Okay, so the workbench is clean now. Well, semi-clean. Let me just get, let's get that out of there. Okay, good enough. So the kit we're gonna go with today for this project is a budget fancy slimline pen. And I've picked black chrome and I went this route for a reason. I'm gonna use a beach blank. The reason I chose beach for this project is I've seen other wood turners use this for bowls and it takes color really well. And it also looks really cool once it's been torched. So that's the process that we're gonna follow for this one. I'm going to turn it, torch it, and then tint it with one of my wood stains. And I think the color, I'm gonna use my ultra dye. And now this one is, I think it's Rendezvous Violet. So we'll see how this turns out. It should look kind of cool, especially with the black chrome on the kit. So let's clear this out. So for the kit, we're going to need our tubes, the pen refill, which will come later, the finial, the clip, the nib, the transmission, the center. Oh, no, we don't need that. Get rid of that. Next, we need to mark our blank. So for this one, the process is a little bit different than your average pen. Because we're not actually cutting this blank in half, we're keeping it as one piece. So I need to take both of the tubes and mark them together with no space in between them. We line them up on our blank like this, again, leaving a little bit of space at the very end for us to either sand down to if you're using a sanding jig, or if you're using a pen mill, you're gonna mill down to that portion. So there, I have my pencil mark. Next, we're gonna cut that. Now that that's cut, we have to drill all the way through. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either drill from one side, flip it around, drill from the other side. Just make sure everything's square if you're gonna do it that way. Or you can get a longer drill bit and drill straight through in one go. I don't have a longer drill bit right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drill from either end and then we can glue our tube in. And you notice I said tube. Let's get it drilled first and I'll come back and explain. All right, so now we have the blank drilled. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna glue in the top tube and it's just the top tube we're gluing in here. The other one's gonna stay free. Then we can take it over to the lathe and turn our profile that we want for the final pin. Now, while I'm prepping this tube, there's one other thing I should note here is you don't wanna scratch up both tubes like you normally would because one of these tubes isn't actually getting glued in. So we wanna keep it as a nice clean surface. So just scratch up one of the tubes and this would be the one that you're going to glue into the pen blank. So it doesn't really matter which one, top or bottom, because with the slim lines, both the tubes are the same length. 
So there I have this one scratched, this one clean. So let's get it glued into the tube now. Okay, so just like any other pen now, we need to square up the ends on this. The key to this is that you want the other tube in the other end of the pen, but leave it free. Make sure you don't glue this in, because otherwise you're not gonna be able to press fit this together. Okay, so there we have our finished pen blank ready to be turned. You'll notice that this tube spins free while this one is glued in. Okay, so the basic form is done. I've sanded to 320. Now our next step is gonna to be to torch this. I'm just gonna give it a light scorching and then we'll go in and dye it. All right, so after scorching that one, putting the dye on it, I just really wasn't impressed with how it looked. I think it was a little bit too dark and I didn't really notice it until it was actually in the, the viewfinder from the camera. So I went back, redid the blank, turned a whole new one. I went with a different effect on this pen, so I, I think it turned out a little bit nicer. I like it. I think it's a nice effect and it's something that I'm going to show in the future. So let's uh, go back to the video and things have changed. So it's, it's no longer that really ugly, dark purple, crap that I had on there before. Let's try this again. So there we have our finished pen blank. Now to press this together, we're gonna need a few things. Our extra tube, our nib, our finial, our clip, our transmission, our pen refill. Our first step is gonna be to press the nib into one end of our extra tube. Done. Next, we wanna press our transmission into the other end of that tube. Done. Now keep in mind when you're pressing in your transmission, you're gonna to wanna to go to just before the line, test out your refill, make sure it twists in and doesn't protrude from the end of the nib, and that it functions properly before going any further. So now that our bottom assembly is done, we need to press the finial and the clip into the other end of our blank. Now make sure you put that bottom assembly into your pen before trying to press the rest of the pen together, otherwise you're gonna crush the bottom of your pen blank. And there we have it, a finished pen. The only last thing I usually recommend is to put a little bit of wax on this tube just to make it slide a little easier in and out of the blank. It also helps to coat the inside of your pen blank. Since this is the way that people are gonna be able to change the refill on it, it just helps to make things go a little smoother. So I'd forgotten about these for a little while. The modified slim lines are, they're kind of fun to make and they're a neat looking pen. So I've never been a really big fan of the way a slim line looks traditionally turned with that center collar and then having your two blanks kind of dip into it. And I think turning it just straight is, it, it's just too small of a pen. This gives the pen a little bit more form and I think it still functions really well. It's still a twist pen. So the mechanism still works on this because of course that back tube is glued in. It comes apart easily as long as you wax that bottom tube. Otherwise it's a real pain to get that bottom tube out. That's it for this one you guys. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If it's your first time here, don't forget to click that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notifications of when I upload a new video. I know some of you are gonna have questions about the way that I finished this pen with kind of that gradiated look or that ombre effect. And I've got a future video coming out about that. I'm also working on a video right now that covers my CA finish technique. And it, it's just a few little tips and tricks that I've learned over the last couple of years turning pens. Hope you enjoyed this one, you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay.
where to start with the rest of this mess. I think I'll start with a beer. Beer o'clock.